So here we are looking at a hemisection of the female pelvis. Here is anterior with the pubic symphysis, and the posterior side with the sacrum, as well as the rectum right here. The structure here is the urinary bladder, and here in the middle is the uterus. We will come back to that in a moment. First, we are going to look at the uh, vulva, or the external genitalia. So from the view we have right now, down here, inferiorly, we can see the labia majora, right here. And this purple structure right here, this is going to be the bulb of the vestibule. The bulb of the vestibule is a paired body of erectile tissue found on either side of the opening of the vaginal canal. We can also see here the glands of the clitoris. It's not the easiest thing to see in this model, but it is here. When we remove the uh, model section, we will be able to see it's better in cross-section. Additionally, we can see up here the ovarian vessels. In this lilac color is the ovarian vein, and in the middle is the ovarian artery. They're going down to the ovary, which is situated in the abdominal cavity. Again, we will remove this section of the model to make it easier to see. We have removed part of the model to give you a true sagittal section of the female pelvis. Again, here is the pubic symphysis anteriorly, sacrum and coccyx posteriorly, with the rectum and the urinary bladder. We can also see the urethra. Here is the labia majora, and medial to the labia majora is the labia minora, right here. The space in between the two labia minora is called the vestibule and is where we find the openings for both the urethra and the vagina. Here we can see the glands of the clitoris again, as well as part of the body of the clitoris. In the intro lecture you will have seen that the uh, clitoris is fairly extensive in the uh, female vulva, um, but we do not see it well in this model at all. In between the urinary bladder and the rectum, we see the uterus right here. The structure is the uterus. It is typically antiverted and antiflexed, meaning it sits on top of the urinary bladder. This is often why pregnant women have to pee all the time. At the inferior end of the uterus is the cervix. The cervix is going to be a canal that closes off the uterus and helps protect both the uterine lumen, or the space inside the uterus, from infection and invasion from external sources, as well as protect a developing fetus if it is in the uterus itself. During first stage labor, the cervix, which we see here, will dilate to a diameter of about 10 centimeters, or about this large. It will allow the passage of the infant from the uterus to the external world via the vaginal canal or vagina, which we see here. Other internal structures we can see are the ovary, which is a glandular organ situated in the abdomen. Against it is the uterine tube. The uterine tube is also called the fallopian tube or the oviduct. Oviduct is often a comparative term describing the tube that connects the ovary to the uterus in all mammals as opposed to just humans. These little finger-like projections at the distal end of the uterine tube that is against the ovary are called the fimbriae. The fimbriae, what they're going to do is they will sweep the surface of the ovary at the point of ovulation to try and catch the oocyte that is ovulated and sweep it into the uterine tube. Fertilization usually occurs in the uterine tube, making it the most common site for ectopic pregnancy or a pregnancy that is occurring outside of the uterus.